Today I'm offering an overview of the game Austerlitz by the international team. Um, so we'll have a quick look at the game today and in subsequent days I will play the game and, uh, and then uh, offer a, a, my estimation of it later. It's a, a, a game produced in Italy in I think 1980 so it, it's... You can, Tell it's, it's got some age to it. Very nice picture on the front. Um, a, a rather strange format of box. It's a long and flat. Here is the map. Um, let me see if I can show the whole thing. There's the map. Got a unit set up on it. Um, you can see the uh, three dimensionality of the pieces. Um, this is the best thing to look at here, here, and here. These are pieces from the actual game, which uh, the game company was originally a jigsaw company, so they, they had fun providing you with a like a jigsaw of a board game to set up. I bought the game um, incomplete, so th these pieces here, you can see there's a next level here, and then a third level in some further places. I, I made those bits up myself, so that's not the quality of the, of the game or, or the, the colours, that is the actual game. Um, so that's the board. Um, I would just to know. I also drew a darker blue colour around the edge of the, the ponds here because they were kind of not so distinct um, prior to my doctrine. Then with the game, you also get your forces on the field um, and examples sheets. So these are the Forces on the field, uh, number and type of forces. Very nice, um, helpful booklet with examples of play described uh, to follow the descriptions given in in the rules themselves. So that's very helpful to uh, illustrate what they are trying to explain. And there you see they show you how to make the board. Um, you also get a rule booklet, standard international team, these two things. It's in four languages, so uh, the English rules are only about 12 or so pages long. Not too many of them. Um, I've, I've annotated it because, oh no, that's French, that's somebody else who <laughs> did that. I've annotated it because uh, uh, the paragraph style um, means it's difficult to find something. It hasn't been. That the paragraphs are not broken down. Um, so I added bullet points to help find appropriate sections. Um, no, that's German. So that's it. That's, that's all the English rules. Not too much, but it's a. Uh, seems that I haven't played it yet, but it seems like a fairly. It's a rule set. The whole thing brings to mind the old Avalon Hill style. You've got your rules booklet, an example of play booklet, and you've got a calendar table which gives a ent variable entry, possible variable con victory condition, uh, and then essentially just the number of turns, 18, each turn being half an hour. Um, and you cross it off here and here for each side as they take their turn. Uh, there's a battle chart. So you've got um, simple, uh, not an odds ratio, but um, plus or minus uh, relative to your opponent. Single die roll. And the uh, 
possible effects are attacker eliminated, defender eliminated, or retreat. And uh, null, nothing, no effect. Um, as I understand, there's two forms of rules to sort of advance game, basically. Um, you, you have your units, and then they have a reduced side. So uh, I think the, the idea is that with this elimination, they would actually be completely eliminated rather than reduced. They might play it differently to that so that they are reduced rather than eliminated. Um, and uh, this is the artillery fire table. So it's based on range, one or two squares distance up to nine. And then you have similar results. There's, there's two results. That's a reddish result is for light artillery. The white results for heavy artillery. Um, and then finally, they provide you with a, what they call a training board, which I think is a very nice idea. Um, let's try and get all of that in view there. So you can try out the, uh, the movement and uh, combat uh, integrations before you actually get to the main game. Now, what point to note very interesting here is the squares or semi squares so each area has a potential of eight exit points um not six with hexagons or perhaps four with soul squares um there is a problem with that with the movement though i'll, I'll speak about that later so um that's the the pieces then the, for the training game they recommend setting up an artillery piece um, a couple of cavalry pieces with this cavalry unit's dragoon so they can operate as infantry two of them together you have light infantry units which are actually stronger than normal infantry units and normal infantry units so um, I should be holding that this way for you. So that's the combat value, that's the movement value. And uh, so your combat value cannot be reduced below one as such. So the light infantry reduced down to one. Um, so the only other factor you have is. Um, on the cavalry, they have a they have movement value here at eight and a charge value of ten. So if they're charging, they can move ten squares. And uh, their charge is affected by how far they move. Then, then you have leaders. Um, leaders have a, a an effect command effectiveness, command range, and then the movement value. So if they have units or a formation within their range, they can adjust. Um, they can adjust its combat value with their effectiveness, and that is compared against any other commander in the opposing side. Okay, so that's some um, French forces. Now, um, as I said, mine was incomplete. The I only had one of the uh, allies. The Austrians and the Russians. This is a, a Russian piece. It's kind of like a doctor of, or is that in fact? Yes, that's a Russian piece. Um, I think this one has been misprinted because that that looks like a, on the back a um, French piece. But apparently they're supposed to be green, and the Austrians were white. Well, my. This is printed off from the feet of their kind of brown. The Russians are brown, very light green on the reduced side. Anyway, that's by the by. So um, let's just put these down and see how, how, how the game plays. So it's interesting in that it, it's a I go, you go system, but um, artillery fires first before any movement. And then, um, and then the um, you can f you basically fight during movement, 
Well, you could fight at the end when you've done all your movements if you like, but you're going to want to do some fighting during movement so that then other units can take advantage of, of what happened there. Okay, so I just quickly threw these down. Um, let's just do this to see what happens. Uh, I'll leave the leaders off for the time being. So say the Russians go first. Um, the movement could be one, one point to turn any, any amount. One, two, three, four, five. So he's an individual unit moving on his own. One, two, three, four, five. So he, they've moved on their own, but they, they now are forming a formation. If instead they, which is two or more units essentially in a row, if they um, had moved as a formation, that would be one, two, three, four, and then they lose the last one. Now here's the problem I found with the movement. Say we've got a formation like this. Um, he's on the small square, he's on these big uh, polygons. Uh, so one, two, okay, fair enough. Now they want to go that way, so he can go there, one. They can't turn to that corner. So he, he would go two, three, four, five. He would have to go two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. For example, like that, they've lost their um, formation. So essentially the formation can go straight ahead or straight to the side because they have five movement points. Um, so that they can't retain formation on, on the diagonal like that. Um, within one movement phase. I mean, I guess what could happen is you could say, okay, one, two, three, he stays, no, how is it? Let's do it this, like this. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five. So it's, it's going to take a bit of getting used to um, moving these folks around okay so back let's let's take take the move so um okay uh, formation that no they don't that they one two three four five so they won't be able to they didn't move as formation so they can't attack in formation if you attack in formation you get a greater strength value but they could defend in formation now and one, two, three, four, five. These ones were always up there. I didn't fire the artillery. Okay, let's say the artillery fires. Let's just, for the sake of it, see what happens. He's going to fire against, I don't know, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the furthest possible range. He needs a 12. And on 2d6, no, nothing. So. He's fired, you put this little smoke counter on him. The back side of these are disorganized. If a unit moves through another unit, it disorganizes it. So there's no stacking at the end of turn unless you want to, unless it's in cities or um, you form a square whereby you can have two infantry units and a artillery, or an artillery can sit underneath an infantry unit. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the light infantry always operate independently. And then let's have the cavalry charge. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, he's going to charge. It, because the charge has to be in a straight line. So, if, say, he started there, he would have to go one, two, three, four, and then he could only charge for two squares. So he's charging for eight squares. So you t you add eight to his combat value, that equals nine, against his combat value of one, but wait, because he's in a formation, he adds his fellows to his combat value. Now, um, artillery don't add to a formation, and artillery on their own will break the formation, so that formation ends here. I think 
I'll have to check, but I think um, the light infantry can be in a formation, but then they just have their basic combat value, of, the basic combat value of one, uh, and the, obviously the formation ends there. Um, cavalry can never f go in a formation. So that's a formation of four, so you add three more to his uh, combat value, so he's got combat value of four against nine, which gives us plus five. And, oh no, only 1d6 for this one. 6 on plus 5, defender eliminated. Okay, let's just eliminate him from there. So he's gone. That is effective. And the artillery becomes disordered. Oops, that should be smoked. Automatically becomes disordered after a charge. Um, now, so uh, that's obviously a good thing to do. <laughs> However, he has this fellow has two uh, uh, cavalry here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's just oh, was he supposed to be seven? Okay, anyway. So he's he's charging seven. So he will be disordered, and the result. Is now that formation's broken, so he's only one, his combat value plus one, so he's two versus uh, eight overall for one combat factor. So that's plus six, four, plus six, d5. Now that means he has to retreat five squares, and it's up to your opponent um, where the retreat goes to, but it has to be. You can't deliberately retreat someone into a river whereby if you have to retreat into a river you're eliminated, etc. Like that. So you have to retreat somewhere that, that does then the least damage, but still you can decide. Uh, one, two, he's going to be retreating off the map, let's say for the sake of example, if we can't. So one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know if that's retreat movement points or retreat. Spaces, and we'll just do spaces for now. Now, because he's retreated four or more spaces in a go, in the advanced rules he becomes reduced. So let's reduce him. And uh, again, your opponent decides the facing of your final unit, so we'll be facing it that way. The final position of your unit. Okay, so that's Green's go. Uh, Russians go. Now France's go. Um, my, that cavalry was effective at a distance, they've closed, so this cavalry will not be so effective. He's going to go at one. Two. Now, you see, I said artillery should fire first, but I believe it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, uh, no, I think, no, no, sorry, that's right, there's the artillery phase. Yes, you have to fire artillery before making any other moves. Okay, so let's fire that artillery piece. Three squares distance. He gets a nine. It's light artillery, so that's going to retreat him two. Okay. So most of the combat results are retreats. Eliminations are quite rare. I think perhaps unless you have a leader adding and a big formation attacking it. Okay, cavalry, one, two, it's going to make a charge, three, four, five, six. So that's, he charged one, two, three, four spaces, plus one is five, and then plus one because he's going against the side. If he was coming at the rear, it would be plus two, and, ah, no, it's cavalry, so um, the, uh, that doesn't side or rear, the facing doesn't affect them. So that's the one, so it's five against one, plus four. Um, one on plus four is nothing. No effect. Oh, I should have removed these disorganized at the end of that first turn. He's disorganized. Um, A double disorganization reduces or eliminates the unit. 
we just turn one, two, three. So that's two plus one, three against two is plus one. Now that's risky because there's a one and six chance, two and six chance of you having to retreat, and two and six chance of the defender retreating. Four is no effect. So at the plus one differential, as, as you have a 50-50 um, comparison, at plus two differential there's one and six chance of you retreating and there's a three and six chance of a defender retreating and possibly retreating quite a lot. You can see it there. So plus one differential is probably not practically useless, plus two gets very useful, plus three it's a dead set, there's not going to be no damage to you, and when you get to plus five the defender's always going to be retreating, and a third of a chance of being eliminated. Okay, interesting. No, um, that's how it goes, let's now factor in the leaders, so um, perhaps I should just finish this turn. Uh, he's got five, so he can, this can, well, chap can come back. One, two, three, four. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Um, oh, uh, because the artillery fired, I have to put a cloud mark on him to show that he cannot move. So I think I'll keep those two as they are. Okay, so that's the end of that player's turn. Then the next player's turn will bring in the leader. So I'm going to say there's there's a leader here, and there's a leader in this formation. Um, okay, so this plays artillery or fire. Woods aren't featured in the, the Austerlitz game. Apparently they are in its companion games of Jena or um, Waterloo. Here you've got frozen lakes. Um, and we'll come to the line of sight rules, which I'm not quite sure I fully understand. They seem bit too simplistic and not having much effect. Um, but anyway, so um, where are we here? Uh, okay, so his artillery, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's a nine to twelve to have an effect. No, nothing. Okay, he's fired. No. Um, these Three fellows will move up as a formation so that they have a double movement costs. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, sorry, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. Um, and they're going to fight straight away. So I can either fight now and, and then move and fight another one, or I can remember, move someone else into position and then go back and fight with them. Um, so you can see there could be problems with uh, remembering where you are, and there's no markers included in the game to help you with that kind of thing. Um, I don't think it's a problem. Is that this, uh, the sense I get is this is more thought of as like a family game rather than a competitive um, historical simulation. A competitive game, a heavy competitive game, or a historical simulation. Or both. So where are we here? This is a formation, so add two is one, so he's on three against one. So he's on plus two differential. Now he's got a leader with an effectiveness of three. If every two points you will add plus one. So the difference between the commands, he has a command of naught, because he doesn't have a command of it's three or four, add two. Okay, so they're on 
um, plus two plus another two plus four. Four defender go back five, so he's going to be reduced again. He's out of it. Okay. Just giving you some idea of how it goes. Um, now there's no um, there's no attack or advance after combat, so this is why you want to break up your your movements in combat so that um, say if that cavalry unit wasn't there, he could have advanced. They just eliminated him. He could have advanced into the space. They can't advance straight away. You can um, battles always take place after the movement so you can move and then attack but never attack and then move so for, and if you move up adjacent to a unit with, in your front you can only attack them in your front um, zone so it's only the, the one square directly in front except for artillery they have like a, an arc of fire um, as illustrated with this inverted triangle on them if you if you do not immediately attack someone you, you move adjacent to and can attack, then they can immediately counterattack if they so wish. So you risk that. Um, but they're already facing, so they don't have to fight each other, I believe. I think what we will have is a charge here. Now, if um, this guy's uh, zone of attack is here, if I was moving through his zone of attack, he would get an opportunity fire against me. I'm not. I'm just moving next to him, not in his zone of attack. So one, two, and then one, two, three, four. That's a charge. Total of five points. Don't think you. That's the commander can only affect a formation. A single unit on its own is not a formation. That's five against two plus three. Attack or retreat one. Okay, so uh, I'm going to retreat him this way. Okay, and he hasn't moved. You can see the, ch the cavalry, now that they've charged, really they need to back out and then charge again. But of course, no one's going to sit. The ha charge has to be in a straight line. So after having a magnificent first charge, they're not going to be that effective. It would be better to try and pressure already retreated units. Like if re a unit retreats one point and then someone else attacks him, uh, and he retreats three more points, uh, three more squares, then that's a reduction. A total of four or more squares retreated in one go. Um, okay, so yes, one. So he's going to turn around one. Um, now, if you if he was moving through there, I believe you get an opportunity fire. So it doesn't specify, but I think turning around is going to count as an opportunity fire. So he'll be better off going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. He's going to move there. 1. And attack. So he gets plus 1 from the side. So that's 3 against 1 is plus two and the retreats one. Okay. One. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so he's been moving around. Okay, so that's the end of that fellow's turn. Back to the French. Um, um, I won't play much more of this. I think you get an idea of 
how it goes, like it's also giving me that kind of dark grey. Um, okay, I think that's enough. So that's that's an overview of the game.